this tutorial is going to cover adding grass to your architectural rendering uh, using a plugin in 3D Studio Max called, um, I believe it's called Hair and Fur. Um, I actually know it from way back in the day uh, when it was called Shave and Haircut. Uh, it's a really cool little application, primarily designed to do hair and fur on objects, but we can also employ that same tool uh, to render out grass uh, and simulate its motion, all kinds of goodness. So what we're going to start with is a fairly large plane. I'm going to drag it out and make it uh, about 40 feet by 40 feet. Um, and I've given it uh, a pretty good number of subdiv subdivisions, but I'm going to go ahead and increase that to about 40 by 40 as well. So I've got one subdivision per every foot. And the first thing that I'm going to do is give it a little bit of a noise modifier um, just to give it a little bit of texture across it, you know, give it a little bit of displacement, sort of a rolling hill kind of thing. So I'm going to go to noise um, and then give it some strength in the Z direction um, just to get a little bit of displacement going. Not a lot, you know, this is 40 feet, that's a pretty big area. You know, and I'd like to get it just a little bit of a rolling quality to it. So the next modifier that we're going to add to this is called hair and fur. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And if you notice, immediately I get something really weird. Um, and again, it's it's more about hair at this point than it is grass. Um, it looks a bit like my pet hedgehog thistle. Uh, in terms of the quality. So definitely got to get in here and do a little bit of work with it right now uh, to turn this into grass. And you know, from my experience, there is, um, you know, I'm underneath properties for the hair and fur modifier. Uh, and I can come in and I can begin to load in some presets. Let's see if I can find where those are at really quick. Some presets, I can click load and there is a grass preset, some additional things uh, that, that work, but I really haven't had as good a success with the presets as I have been just sort of modifying this on my own and getting it more exactly what I want. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm doing grass that sort of is to scale. So I'm going to build one additional object really quick. Let's build about a six foot tall object in here uh, and let's make it about um, one foot by one foot by six feet and that will be my approximate stand-in for a person so uh, this is reasonably tall grass right now so we know we want to edit that um, and that's sort of where we'll begin with this so I'm gonna go ahead and select my object and I've got my hair and fur selected from my modifier stack list and I'm immediately going to change um, a couple of things um, to get this working uh, in a simpler kind of way. First of all I've got to take the scale way down so we're going to drop the scale down to let's say about 10 percent of the original height. And You notice I get these weird little pyramids now uh, so I'm not too wild about that, but you know, that's that's a more reasonable grass height That's probably about six inches eight inches probably a little bit too high for reality um, Unless you know, we're sort of in the middle of a denser field, but it's gonna get us um, a little better rendering quality than if I try and keep it really short the shorter I make the grass the more density I'm going to have to add in terms of the hair count um, and the resultants of that is going to be more polygons and slow render times. So I've got to kind of keep things in check there uh, and, and kind of keep the basic things together. So if you notice, I, I'm really not wild about this pyramid thing, um, as I mentioned before. So I really need to, to come in and begin to give the tip a little bit of thickness as if it's been mowed. The root is too wide. I'm going to change that to two. And I start getting something like this which is a little bit better um, other than the fact that the grass is brown rather than green. Um, so let's see if we can't change that really quick as well just in terms of its basic quality. So I'm going to change the tip color to more of a green 
that's a kind of a bright green. Again, I'm thinking about this as grass that's going to go in front of an, an architectural rendering. So I don't really necessarily want this bright, aggressive green. I actually want a little more of a gray green, brown green, earthy tone kind of green um, so that the building uh, or whatever's in the background pops out. I'm not necessarily wanting to do a rendering of grass in this particular case. Again, this is sort of looking towards how I do this in architecture. So I'm going to keep the, the tonal quality of the, of the grass a little bit in the background. Um, next thing I need to do is let's just go ahead and add in a light source, the common light source, the daylighting system that I would typically have on a project like this. And, you know, we're ready to go ahead and do a quick test rendering just to kind of see how this is looking. So I'm going to go to Rendering, Render Setup, uh, and I'm going to set this so it's a really low quality rendering, but ideally it'll render pretty fast. So you can see we get this initial pass, and then we get the grass pass. And that's okay, but there's a little bit of a problem with that, in that you know if I have an object casting shadows on the grass, sometimes those don't pick up, or if I want the grass to show up in reflections of glass or something like that, those might not always show up then either. And I haven't been able to specifically sort of track down exactly how and why that happens, but the core trick to get them working is we want to make sure that those um, blades of grass render inside of the mental ray rendering pass. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into my hair and fur properties. And um, one of the first things I'm going to do is um, go to well, let, let's let's back up to this really quick. Specular quality. I, I want to change. You know, I don't want the grass to be particularly shiny like hair is. So I'm going to drop the specular quality, and I'm going to drop the glossiness. That's going to sort of round this bubble out um, to make grass the grass blades not quite so shiny. The other problem that you should have noticed with the rendering, um, and we'll do one more really quick right here so I can talk about that again, is that there's not nearly enough density for the blades of grass. So you can see I have something like this coming together. Um, so let's go ahead and add to the hair count one more zero. Um, and you notice that immediately changes the density on screen. Um, and at this time, I'm still only showing a certain portion of the grass uh, in my current view, let's see here. I believe that the portion is someplace in here. I'll probably stumble across it later in the tutorial. Let's move on to applying um, this rendering in the mental ray pass. So I'm going to go rendering, and then we're going to look at effects. And the hair and fur right now is being added in as a post rendering effect, sort of in this buffer. We're going to change it to a mental ray prim. Close that. And now let's take a different, take a look at the difference in the rendering pass, just sort of as it's rendering. You're going to notice, first of all, the grass should show up denser because we've gone from 1,000 strands to 10,000 strands. You notice it's rendering in the render pass, but we've also sort of lost the color of the grass right now as well. So we need to come back in and we are going to go to apply a mental ray shader and we're going to open up our material panel and I'm going to add in the first material for this. So I'm going to name this grass base and I want it to be matte and I definitely want a texture map in the background so I've grabbed offline this uh, reasonably nice grass texture right here so I'm gonna apply that to the plane object and I want to make sure that that's showing up in the viewport and so you notice that that is incredibly dense right now so I'm gonna change the number of times that that repeats or the scale at which that repeats. So I'm just double clicking on the bitmap here. So it's repeating over a one inch tile and you know that probably would look a lot better over about an eight foot by eight foot tile. 
Okay, so I'm also going to bring in one more material right here. I'm going to name this one Grass Blades. Again, I want that to have a matte quality to it. And I'm going to drag this same bitmap that we used for the base onto my grass blades, just like that. And I'm going to drag this grass blades to my mental ray shader and apply it as an instance. So you notice that shows up now uh, right inside uh, of that texture map list. So let's do another quick rendering. And what we should begin to see is that the grass is going to render in the same pass, that we're going to have a similar tonality of grass here and grass underneath. Okay, so let's continue on. Um, you know, there's a few things right now in terms of the grass that I'm not too wild about. Um, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more variance with the height and maybe a little bit more variance with um, the appearance of the grass. So I'm going to uh, increase the randomness of the scale by a bit. And I'm going to decrease the segments by one. The next thing that I'm going to do um, is we're going to go ahead and add in an effect. Oh, and let's talk about the segments really quick before I go too far along. So the segments, you can see one, two, three, four segments right now in that individual blade of grass. Um, if I go to five, you'll see now one, two, three, four, and five segments on each blade of grass. What we're getting ready to do next is add a force modifier or a wind modifier to the surface so that uh, we actually get a little bit of natural motion on the grass as well. Um, the more segments that I have, the more natural that motion is going to look. However, the more segments I have, the more polygons I have in my scene as well. So, you know, somewhere between four and five is probably going to work well. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this at four and, and hope we don't run into a crash during the middle of the video or something like that. So let's go ahead and add in create space warps or forces. We're going to add in a wind force. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this direction. And on that wind force, I'm going to look at its properties. I'm going to decrease the strength to about 0.3. And I'm going to add quite a bit of turbulence because I don't want it to just be consistently blowing across the surface. I want it you know, to have a little bit of randomness to it. Um, that is a universal wind right now. It's happening over a large area because I do not have any decay applied to it. Um, so it's going to happen over everything right now. But I do have to tell the grass uh, surface to actually work with this modifier as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and select my grass surface, and I'm going to come down here to Dynamics. And what I need to do is I need to apply External Forces, Add. I'm going to select the Wind and it should put that in my external forces list. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom into the grass here so we can kind of see it start to move. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead. I, I've got two options. I can go ahead and pre-compute everything, um, but a lot of times I can just use this live tool as well. And you'll notice everything immediately droops, which is pretty sad and depressing. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to none and reset everything. And let's look at our parameters right here. Oh, part of the problem is I've got really, really intense gravity going on. Uh, well, I shouldn't say really intense gravity. That's 9.8 meters per second squared. That is what gravity really is. Um, but I really need the grass. I, I don't want to increase the stiffness to keep it from falling. Um, I actually want to decrease gravity to keep it from falling because I still want it to move laterally in the wind pretty freely. So I'm going to change that to about a 0.1 in terms of gravity. And now let's go ahead and turn this back to live again. 
you know, so it's still drooping, something terrible. So let's just turn gravity off altogether. And we're going to go ahead and say none and back to live. And now you notice it's not uh, drooping down anymore because gravity is, in effect, not pulling the blades of grass, which are actually chunks of hair down. Um, but the stiffness is a little bit, you know, a blade of grass doesn't quite bend over like that. So I want to go ahead and change my stiffness to about a 0.75. You notice they're going to stand much more upright now. And the entire blade of grass is going to start bending around and moving a bit. So let's go ahead and run another quick rendering. Now, if you have that uh, dynamic force going of the wind on the grass, it's definitely going to animate the grass blowing around in the wind. Uh, it should work really well. Uh, just keep in mind that I don't necessarily want that simulation running all the time. You know, if I have my plane selected with the grass on it, you're actually going to see it interactively move the grass around. Um, but I don't want that happening all the time that I'm working. So at some point, I usually end up turning that mode to none. Um, I need to turn this back to live before I run the rendering if I want to have the dynamics of the grass moving in the wind. My other option is I can run this as a pre-computed file, run it as a simulation, and then load the stat file that's generated back into the scene. Uh, but typically, if I'm just going to render on one computer, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and switch that to live right before rendering. So if you notice, there was one other problem that I wasn't really too wild about in terms of this rendering, and that is um, the texture map right here. Uh, you know, there are some people that say use a dirt texture map underneath the blades of grass because that's what really happens. I have typically had much more success actually using a grass texture map like I'm showing here um, because, uh, and then I even match the texture maps with the grass, the blades of grass, and the ground plane. Um, but the grass texture map on the plane is really bright in terms of how it shines through. Um, so what I want to do is go back to my material properties. And I'm going to look at not my grass blades, but I want to look at my grass base. And to change that, I'm going to drop my diffuse down to 2.5, my glossiness down to 2.25. So I'm going to still get the same green tones that are in the grass but it's going to render out at a much, much darker level, um, and hopefully that'll get me closer to what I want in terms of a final rendering. So we'll do one more pass at the rendering here. And what I'm talking about in particular is how shiny that is right through here. So hopefully in this next rendering pass, we'll see less of that. It should match the tone of the grass quite a bit better. Yeah, and then I begin to get something like that, which is more uh, what I'm looking for um, for this particular effect.